The Crimson Crisis is what I used to call my exes, period. What's up guys, David one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah, yes, it's list day, and uh, as always, we're continuing my series of looking at the best cards in the main sets of the game, and today is Crimson Crisis. It's a bad set. Yeah, this set's actually pretty lackluster. There's some interesting, useful cards in it, but there's there's nothing flashy. I uh, you have been warned. So these cards are the top 10 least boring. Fun fact about Crimson Crisis, right about now is when uh, Konami and Upper Deck got into their sue each other lawsuit about the rights to the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game in the North America territory, so, this set's sneak peek was actually delayed uh, because of all the legalness. And then from the wiki, it sounds like it was like sneak peeked twice? From like once from Konami, once from Upper Deck, Upper, Upper Deck, Upper Deck. So that's, if I'm understanding this properly, that's, that's weird. I'm not even gonna screw around. Let's just get through it, go. go. Number 10 is Mysterious Triangle. <laughs> Mysterious Triangle is a quick play spell that reads, destroy one monster on the field with an A counter, then special summon from your deck one alien monster. It must be level four. Destroy it during the end phase. <laughs> wow, if this wasn't stuck in aliens, this card would be freaking fantastic. As a quick play spell, it's extremely versatile, and destroying possibly one of your opponent's monsters to summon one from your deck is so dumb. It's an E-Telly, that's a plus one. Oh, so why is it only number 10? Because it's stuck in aliens. I think the biggest problem with this card is the monster you destroy must have an A counter on it, which means, uh, that means your deck is actually functioning. So if there's like, something wrong on the field that's a problem that's preventing you your, and your deck from working, this isn't gonna actually do any problem solving for you because your deck needs to be working, i.e. placing A counters about, and for this thing to actually be able to be used. So it's not really a starter or an extender, it's kind of a win more blowout card. To say it's not powerful is incorrect, it's just simply Probably not what the deck really needs, but it is a decent utility card, and it is a plus one, potentially speaking. You could also pop your own thing, in theory, to get something else you need. So there is a lot of weird utility with that as well. So you know what? Number 10, I think, is a really safe place for this card. Twilight Rose Knight is number 9. This is the start of a theme. Prepare to be bored! Twilight Rose Knight is a level 3 Dark Warrior. Oof, that typing though. Thousand to thousand attack defense spread with the following effect. Monsters your opponent control cannot target your plant monsters with attacks. Who cares? What we really care about is the next effect. When this card is normal summoned, you can special summon one level 4 or lower plant monster from your hand. Oh, oh, he's, uh, it's, uh, uh... It's that warrior, that old card, uh... Wow, I'm really spacing on the name of that card. Wow. But who cares? Did I forget to mention that this thing is a tuner? That's why this is important. Yeah, basically it's a tuner that summons another guy from your hand, making this thing pretty much toolbox any, what? Synchro of level seven to four. I don't, I don't, I don't think there's a four that you, Well, you could make armory arm? depending on what plant monsters you have in your deck. Obviously, I think your best utility is that instant level seven synchro play, because there's a lot of really good level sevens. Uh, there's actually one on the list. So that's neat. And this is going to be a theme, just you wait. Next up we have is Verdant Sanctuary. Verdant Sanctuary is a continuous spell that reads, when a face-up insect monster on the field is destroyed, its controller gets to summon an insect monster from their deck of the same level. All the stupid sirens keep polluting my audio. Go away. When a face-up insect type monster is destroyed on the field, the controller of that card can take an insect monster from their deck of the same level and add it to their hand. One of the great parts about having the Discord that you guys can join if you'd like is they help me with these lists. However, <laughs> I have no idea why this is on here. I mean, all right, you know what? Instead of cheating and looking it up, 
because that's no fun. Instead, let's just have Dave be a giant jackass and guess. When you face up insect type monster in the field is destroyed, it's sent to the graveyard. Its controller, eh, okay. From a generic standpoint, it allows you to mitigate any loss due to battle or self-destruction effects. It's also not once per turn, so presumably if you could loop the destruction effect, you could keep adding guys. So you definitely could do something stupid with like a firewall dragon. Am I getting close? Maybe in sectors? If I knew how that deck worked... <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! You know what? How about you guys down in the comments below tell me why this is here? Because I'm too lazy to stop all the recording equipment, turn all the lights off, and switch the computer back to not the setup and look this up. No way is that gonna happen. Number seven is Arcanite Magician. Oh, here we go. Arcanite Magician's a level seven light spellcaster monster with the following ability. Must be made with one tuner and one non-tuner spellcaster monster, so he is landlocked to certain decks. But he's also super good, so whatever. If this card is synchro summoned, you can put two spell counters on him. He gains a thousand attack for each spell counter, that which puts him up to 2400 attack if you summon him in attack mode. You can remove one spell counter from somewhere on your side of the field to destroy one card your opponent controls. Whoa! He basically comes out with two of his own counters, so at the worst case scenario, he can pop two cards your opponent has. That's fantastic. And if you're playing like a spell counter deck, he can just pretty much that. That's a that's a good level seven synchro monster. You could play it in that Eddie Mormon deck. <laughs> I am literally going to call that something else in every video. <laughs> we have gathered here today to mourn the passing of a brilliant. Level 7 Synchro Monster Dark Striker Fighter Oh ye who who been a routed and no longer works I don't know what voice this is It's kind of darts It's kind of that guy from the Princess Bride But yeah, Dark Strike Fighter got an errata Before the errata, this level 7 Dark Synchro Monster A machine at the following effect, you contribute one monster you control, your opponent takes burn damage, equal to that monster's level times 200. So he's a basically a cannon soldier you can pull out of your extra deck anytime you want. That's got the word loop printed right on the card there. Yep, I can see why they eroded it. And you wouldn't even need to necessarily loop him. All you had to do was punch with a bunch of dudes and go in your main phase two, make them, and then just sack all the guys you had on your board to finish your opponent off. This thing ended games. So how did they manage to make him bad? They gave him a hard once per turn and it can only be used during your main phase one, so you can't use it during your main phase two to clean up an after battle scenario. Boo! However, if you do play a synchro based deck, this wouldn't be a terrible option to keep in your extra deck in case you get close to that time in the round for like a game three cheese win. Basically being a synchro equivalent to Gaga -ga Cowboy. Obviously, the errata got rid of his over ridiculous power level. However, it does seem to make the card work more the way it was probably intended. You take three monsters, and you turn it into one and some burn damage. Cute. Ooh, top five. Here we go. Dark Salvo. Besides looking like something from Super Mario Brothers, or like Cool World. What does it do? Black Salvo is a level 3 dark machine tuner monster, and it's the same damn thing as the Rose Guy. When this thing is normal summon, you can target a dark level 4 machine monster in your graveyard and special summon it. It's in defense position and its effects are negated, but who cares? This thing's a tuner, presumably the monster you summoned wasn't. You're making a synchro play. 
It's a three and someone's a four? Man, they must really want you to make Dark Strike Fire. <laughs> this is exactly the kind of thing that we needed when we were at the beginning of the Synchro era because normal summoning a tuner and waiting a turn to summon the other thing is a really bad way of Synchro summoning, so what we really do need is to at least be able to spam two monsters on the board with one play, and this is kind of the beginning of that style of Yugi Mans. Yes, monsters, Daisy Ching, and others. It's all downhill from here, folks. <laughs> but that's really all there is to it. It's just one of those old-timey grenade things with the, the bomb and the wick. So, next card. Perfect. 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 Number four is Trap Eater. There's a joke in here somewhere. It sounds like me on a Friday. That's my Pornhub handle. I have a picture of this on my Grinder account. Trap Eater is a <laughs> Trap Eater is a level four dark tuner fiend monster with the following ability. Cannot be normal summoned or set, must first be special summoned by sending a continuous trap card your opponent controls to the graveyard to summon this thing from your hand. Okay, it's not continuous, it's face-up trap card. However, to be fair in my defense, I can't think of... What? Is there is there any card that would be face-up as a trap card? Something like Swords of Revealing Light that's not... Go away! Because the Palios don't count as traps when they're on the field, and I think all the trap monsters are all continuous. Doesn't matter, you send a face-up trap your opponent controls to summon the thing. That's why it's called Trap Eater. Yugi Nono used to talk about this card all the time as interesting meta calls. Uh, may he rest in peace. And honestly, it's a really neat little card. If your opponent's playing a bunch of floodgates that's not obviously like vanity's emptiness, <laughs> you can just chew that thing up and throw this thing on the field. It's neat. And it basically, it, you know, gets a guy on your board at the expense of your opponent paying the cost. So that's always good board advantage stuff. So, oh, I got something in my eye. Ah! Ah, oh, you became the very thing you were sworn to destroy. Ah! Oh. I lost my train of thought. Let's go to the next card. Number three is Debris Dragon. Debris Dragon is a level four. Where <laughs> I had you going there for a sec, didn't I? Debris Dragon is a level 4 Wind Dragon Tuner Monster with the following effect. It's just Black Salvo! I told you it's a theme. <laughs> oh, <please. laughs> when this card is normal summoned, you can target one monster in your graveyard, in this case with 500 or less attack, and special summon it in attack position, but its effects are negated. Okay, cool. And then, next effect, this monster can only be used as material for a synchro monster if that synchro monster is a dragon type, and the other material can't be level 4. So you're, you're, not, making, you're not making level 8 dragons unless you got two other material. They thought ahead, I guess. I guess a one-card Stardust Dragon felt too strong. A little underwhelming nowadays, but I'm sure back in the day that that was a very important balancing uh, balancing effect. Especially considering this thing was actually on the Forbidden Limit for a little while. I think, what, it won for a long time? The ironic thing is, it would be a pain in the butt to make Stardust Dragon with this thing, despite the fact it looks like a little baby Stardust Dragon. Go figure. But anyway, I don't want to keep talking about tuners that summon other stuff. Number two! Number two is Doop Frog! Oh, Woot! Woot! Favorite card in the set, one of my favorite things of all time. I love me some frogs. Love that deck. And Doop Frog's an important member of the frog engine. I mean, he kind of ends up getting in the frog engine simply because Swap Frog and Ronin Tona need other frogs and all their other the rest of them are really bad. So he's kind of number three, like, de facto. But, but, whatever, Doop Frog is still kind of neat. With a 2k booty, this level 2 Aqua Water Monster has the following effect. This card's name becomes Death Frog. I forgot it did that. While it's on the field. Monsters your opponent controls cannot target monsters for attacks except this one. It's this one referring to this card, not this one as referring to Dupe Frog. So if you have two, your opponent can't attack. That's cute. Where this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one frog monster from your deck to your hand. Obviously it's a when you can, meaning he does miss timing in certain, uh, certain things. What a pain in the butt. However, I will say this, his self synergy where he redirects all attacks at him and then searches when he's killed by battle, that's 
That's good card design. Also, in the modern day, you're using, uh, you're using your totally awesome to summon him during your opponent's standby phase to add one more layer of protection to your board. So that's just really cool and does mean that your little old dupe frog has aged pretty well. Plus, you know what? I don't know why he's a dupe. He got his education. Look, he's got he's got his little hat on there. He he got his GED. Maybe it was his diploma. He's got a bachelor's of science. A minor in uh, croaking. I'm struggling for a joke here. Go 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 to go to the next go to the next card. Oh, hey, look, we got an honorable mention. Doom Kaiser Dragon Assault Mode. Oh yeah, Assault Modes came out in, uh, out in this set, uh, I guess. This level 8 fire zombie monster with 2900 attack uh, has the following effect. Cannot be normal summoned set, must be summoned by Assault Mode Activate. However, when this card is special summoned, you can special summon as many zombie monsters from either player's graveyard to your side of the field. Whoa! Their effects are negated but then destroyed during the end phase, but obviously you're synchro summoning or whatever with this, so that's a lot of advantage. Zombie world seems good. And when this card on the field is destroyed, you can special summon one Doom Kaiser Dragon from your graveyard, presumably the one you used to make him. Um, this is a pretty good card. He's only an honorable mention, however, because Assault Mode is bullcrap. For the uninitiated, Assault Mode Activate is a trap card where you tribute the Synchro Monster to summon the Assault Mode version from your deck. So if you draw it, you're sh** out of luck, scrub! But besides its wonky summoning mechanic uh, aside, he's actually a pretty solid monster, so a good old HM for him. And the moment you've all been waiting for, the dishonorable mention, what is it? Flying Fortress Skyfire. Oh. Oh, no. This level 8 machine wind monster with 3k attack has the following ability. Cannot be normal summoner set, must be special summoned by something called, uh... Summon Reactor SK. Whatever. Once per turn, you can send a card from your hand to the graveyard. It's not a discard by language of the card, so... Ugh. But anyway, you can you can send something from the from your hand to the graveyard to activate one of his two abilities. When your opponent normal special summons a monster, you can destroy the monster and then burn them for, like, what, 800 damage? Yes, 800 damage. Or, when your opponent sets a card, you can, you can destroy it and then burn them for 800 damage. Alright, that's not awful. He's a big beater. He's got some disruption. It, it activates on your opponent's turn. Why is he a DM? Oh, let's just backtrack to that... What was it called? Summon Reactor SK. Must be a spell card, right? No, it's a level 5 machine monster. <sighs> oh, that's why. Okay, so let's say you manage to get this level 5 monster you can't normal summon out of the board. You have to sack something for it. Let's say you cheesed it. How do you make your big dude? You have to have Trap Reactor, Spell Reactor, and Summon Reactor all on the field. Send them all to the graveyard to summon your big Skyfire, thankfully from your hand deck or graveyard. Ugh. Need three specific monsters on board of all different levels. That will... That will never happen. You are never making this thing. That's so bad. And like, honestly, his effect is just kind of okay by modern standards. He'd been, he would have been pretty alright back in the day. He didn't have much self-protection, but he's at least got some sort of, you know, disruption through your opponent's plays. And he's big, I guess. But like, even back in the day, it was not worth making this thing with the very specific setup that we required. This thing sucks. It's incredibly disrespectful. It's a shame too, because it's got some Transformer vibe to it. Probably because its name is Skyfire, but uh, okay, anyway. Ah, it is the sponsor time. Uh, today's sponsor is Metemets, because why else would it be? What else would it, would it be? I, I don't know. Today's sponsor is Ryan, because he's a goblin. If you guys want a custom cloth play mat, type in the promo code uh, Troll the Meta over at MetaMat's website, and uh, you too can get a custom cloth play mat. They are awesome. They're the best. Um, maybe you can get them with with my with my shirt, uh, my shirt uh, design on there. In case you guys have been watching this whole video wondering what it was. <laughs> but anyway, number one. 
Numero uno is a Blackwing card. It's okay, Dave. They were good at one point. They were good. It's okay for a Blackwing card to be number one on something. It doesn't make you a scrub. Blackwing Gale the Whirlwind. Long ago passed before the days of one Blackwing card in every new set, despite the fact that we have plenty of other archetypes that would love that kind of weirdly uh, loyal support flow. Stop. I think they've stopped. They've finally stopped. But that is really doing Gale the Whirlwind at service. This card is really good. If you control a Blackwing monster other than Gale, you can special summon Gale from your hand. So, unlike the other tuners on the list, instead of, you know, summoning himself and then summoning something with him, he just sticks himself on board if he sees a buddy, which is, uh, that's probably a lot easier to set up. So that's really solid. At this point, you're probably making Armor Master with him because he's also in the set, but we're only gonna have Blackwings take up one spot. So Armor Master is like his, bad, his buddy for this spot. And level three Dark Tuner is just, you know, that's just good. Gives you options. But his on-field effect, unlike most of the other tuner monsters in the game, uh, is actually all right. It can solve some problems. Once per turn, you can target a face-up monster on the field, have its attack and defense, and that's permanent. Your opponent's got a weird dude causing you some tribal stare, some tribulations. Just half it, just half it and crash it, and then sink or summon or whatever. What does, who, who cares? That's solid removal. And it deals with cards in a way that a lot of cards just don't have the protection against. Like, oh, this thing can't be killed by card effects, and, and or something like that. But, oh, I'm killing it by battle. I'm just chopping it in half. That's, you know, that's it. That's neat. I gotta give it to Gale. This card's actually pretty annoying, and it's a solid tuner monster. And it's uh, it, it really does give you the impression that Black Wings are going to be a good deck in the future. Anyway guys, that was The Crimson Crisis. I hope you guys enjoyed the list. I had fun with it because um, I have no other choice. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. Remember guys, if you don't drill the metal, who will? I will see you guys next time. Well, looks like they made it through the video, but you'd still be a slacker if you didn't subscribe up there. Maybe you should check out one of these other videos. Maybe then you'd actually be a decent opponent for me.